Chapter 5 of Aspects of Occultism by Dion Fortune, The Worship of Isis. All the gods are one god, and all the goddesses are one goddess, and there is one initiator. In the beginning was space and darkness and stillness, older than time and forgotten of the gods. Movement arose in space, that was the beginning. This sea of infinite space was the source of all being. Life arose therein as a tide in a soundless sea. All shall return thereto when the night of the gods draws in. This is the great sea, Mara, the bitter one, the great mother. And because of the inertia of space, air movement arose as a tide. She is called by the wise the passive principle in nature, and is thought of as water or space that flows. But there is no flowing in space till the power stirs, and this power is the active principle of creation. All things partake of the nature of the active or the passive principle, and are referred thereto. Thrice greatest Hermes, graved on the Smaragdon tablet, as above, so below. Upon earth we see the reflection of the play of the heavenly principles in the actions of men and women. The virgin in her passivity is even as primordial space ere the tides arose. The male is the life giver. These in the making of life play the active and passive parts. By him she is made creative and fertile. But hers is the child. And he, though the giver of life, passes empty-handed. He spends himself, and nothing remains that is his, save as she calls him, mate. His life is between her hands, his life that was, and is, and shall be. Therefore should he adore the passive principle, for without her he is not. Little knoweth he his need of her in all the ways of life. She is the great goddess. All the gods are one god, and all the goddesses are one goddess, and there is one initiator. She is called by many names by many men, but to all she is the great goddess, space and earth and water. As space she is called Rhea, mother of the gods that made the gods. She is more old than time. She is the matrix of matter the root substance of all existence, undifferentiated, pure. She is also Bina, the supernal mother, that receiveth Chokmah, the supernal father. She is the giver of form to the formless force whereby it can build. She is also the bringer in of death, for that which has form must die, outworn, in order that it may be born again to fuller life. All that is born must die, but that which dies shall be reborn. Therefore she is called Mara, bitter, our lady of sorrows. For she is the bringer in of death. Likewise she is called Gi, for she is the most ancient earth, the first formed from the formless. All these is she, and they are seen in her, and whatsoever is of their nature answers unto her and she hath dominion over it. Her tides are its tides, her ways are its ways, and whoso knoweth the one knoweth the other. Whatsoever ariseth out of nothingness, she giveth it. Whatsoever sinketh down into nothingness, she receiveth it. She is the great sea, whence life arose, to which all shall return at the end of an aeon. Herein do we bathe in sleep, sinking back into the primordial deep, returning to forgotten things before time was, and the soul is renewed, touching the Great Mother. Whoso cannot return to the primordial hath no roots in life, but withereth as the grass. These are the living dead, they who are orphaned of the Great Mother. The daughter of the Great Mother is Persephone, Queen of Hades, ruler of the kingdoms of sleep and death, 
Under the form of the Dark Queen, men also worship her, who is the One. Likewise is she Aphrodite. And herein is a great mystery, for it is decreed that none shall understand the One without the Other. In death men go to her across the shadowy river, and she is the keeper of their souls until the dawn. But there is also a death in life, and this likewise leadeth on to rebirth. Why fear ye the Dark Queen, O men? She is the Renewer. From sleep we rise refreshed, from death we rise reborn, by the embraces of Persephone men are made powerful. For there is a turning within of the soul whereby men come to Persephone. They sink back into the womb of time. They become as the unborn. They enter the kingdom where Persephone rules as queen. They are made negative and await the coming of life. And the queen of Hades cometh in unto them as a bridegroom, and they are made fertile for life and go forth, rejoicing for the touch of the queen of the kingdoms of sleep hath made them potent. And even as the queen of Hades is the daughter of the great mother, so from the great sea rises the golden Aphrodite, giver of love. And she also is Isis, after another manner. She is the awakener. That which is latent she calleth forth into potency. She is the attraction of outer space, making the center to manifest. That which is the center, the all-potent, waiteth and acheth, unable to brim over and outpour into manifestation until the attraction of outer space draweth upon him. Equilibrium is fixed in inertia until outer space overset the balance and the All-Father pours forth to satisfy the hunger of space. Strange and deep are these truths. Verily, they are the keys to the lives of men and women, and unknown to those who worship not the great goddess. Golden Aphrodite cometh not as the virgin, the victim, but as the awakener, the desirous one. As our space she calls, and the All-Father commences the courtship, she awakeneth him to desire, and the worlds are created. Lo, she is the awakener. That which is potent in the outer is latent in the inner, awaiting the awakener, unable to brim over until that touch be given, striving in travail as one who cannot bring forth until the great goddess changeth the latent into the potent. How powerful is she! golden Aphrodite, the awakener of manhood. Our Lady is also the moon, called of some Selene, of others Luna, but by the wise Levana. For therein is contained the number of her name. She is the ruler of the tides of flux and reflux. The waters of the great sea answer unto her. Likewise the waters of all earthly seas and she ruleth the nature of women. But there is likewise in the souls of men a flowing and an ebbing of the tides of life, which no one knoweth save the wise. And over these tides the great goddess presides under her aspect of the moon. As she passeth from her rising to her setting, so answer these tides unto her. She riseth from the sea as the evening star, and the waters of earth rise in flood. She sinketh as Luna in the western ocean, and the waters flow back into the inner earth and are still in that great lake of darkness wherein are the moon and stars reflected. Whoso is still as the dark underworld lake of Persephone shall see the tides of the unseen moving therein and shall know all things. Therefore is Luna also called the giver of visions. But all these things are one thing. All these goddesses are one goddess, and we call her Isis, the all-woman in whose nature all things are found, virgin, 
and desirous by turn, giver of life and bringer in of death. She is the cause of creation, for she awakeneth the desire of the All-Father, and for her sake he createth. Likewise, the wise call all women Isis. She it is, who as the great sea biddeth him return unto her, sink into her depths, spend himself, and sleep in utter negation. She it is, who as Isis of the underworld awakeneth him with her kisses in the darkness, and he cometh forth by day all potent as Osiris. She it is, who rises from the sea as a star, and calleth him to come forth, and he answereth unto her, and the earth grows green with grain. All these things is she, and many more, changing from one to another with the tides of the moon, and the needs of men's souls answer unto her. In the outer he is the male, the Lord, the giver of life, but in the inner he taketh life at her hands, as she bendeth over him, he kneeling. Therefore should he worship the great goddess, for without her he hath no life, and every woman is her priestess. In the face of every woman, let him look for the features of the goddess, watching her phases through the flow and return of the tides to which his soul answereth, awaiting her call, as he needs must, aching in his barrenness. Each woman is a priestess of the goddess. She is the potent queen of the underworld, whose kisses magnetize and give life. In the inner she is all potent, she is the fertilizer, she causeth the male to create. For without desire, life goes not forth. It is her call in the darkness that awakeneth. For in the inner, the male is inert. Not of his own life does he arise, but for desire of her. Until her hands touch him, he is as the dead in the kingdom of the shades. He is death in life. O daughters of Isis, adore the goddess, and in her name give the call that awakens and rejoices. So shall ye be blessed of the goddess and live with fullness of life. The wise of old beheld all created things as the luminous garment of the creator, and in the ways of nature they discerned the ways of God. And they adored God, made manifest in nature, saying, In nature is God made manifest. Therefore let nature be unto me the manifestation of God. Isis is the all-woman, and all women are Isis. Osiris is the all-man, and all males are Osiris. Isis is all that is negative, receptive, and latent. Osiris is all that is dynamic and potent. That which is latent in the outer is potent in the inner, and that which is potent in the outer is latent in the inner. Therefore is Isis both Persephone and Aphrodite, and Osiris, the giver of life, is likewise the lord of the realms of death. This is the law of alternating polarity, which is known to the wise. Man should not forever be potent, but should lie latent in the arms of Persephone, surrendering himself. Then she who was dark and cold as outer space before the creative word is made queen of the underworld, crowned by his surrender, and her kisses become potent upon his lips. Awakened by her kisses, he shall arise, the all-potent, and his desire shall call golden Aphrodite unto him. But without the kisses of Persephone, he sleepeth in Hades forever. And she who is priestess of Isis ruleth over the subtle inner tides of the hearts of men as Levana, the moon. 
as Persephone she draweth him down into the darkness, that he may be receptive, negative, as Aphrodite she awakeneth him to light and life. She answereth with her changing phases to the needs of his secret life, and he, fulfilled of her, is made glorious in his strength. And she, so awakening, so calling, so answering, is filled with fullness of life, for she is beloved of the goddess.